Welcome to The Road. This is a weekly podcast of All Saints Lutheran Church. I'm your host, John Pedersen, and I serve as pastor. Each week, we reflect on faith, life, and navigating the road ahead. The language of journey is common when we think about life. It has its joys and challenges along the way, and we all need a little encouragement and guidance at times to keep us going. There's a word in the Bible, asphalia, which means truth, but it's the same root word we use in English for asphalt, if you can believe that is a solid surface that makes travel easier and more assured. And so every week we're going to be exploring elements of faith and life that keep us on the road. Faith isn't about living a perfect life. It's about finding our way, getting through rough spots, but seeking out those great vistas too. You can find my weekly message here, but you'll also find special conversations with guests who have insights on things like wellness, parenting, and living with unique purpose. If you appreciate this podcast, remember to subscribe where possible and share it with a friend. Here's this week's message. Well, we're uh, continuing our series by faith and we're reflecting on what it means to embody a life of faith. Last week, we talked about how faith provides a different perspective on the meaning of home, that we can really find our home anywhere. And most importantly, we find it in our relationship with God. Today in the extended passage from Hebrews 11 that we heard just a little earlier, uh, we get a sweeping retelling of the lives of people of faith and how they adventured and persevered through it all. It's an important passage because it gives us further insight into what it means to live by faith. Living by faith can bring exhilaration, but you can also expect hardships and difficulties too. So I want to speak about perseverance today, but I do want to say a few words about today's gospel as well. It's a a tough passage, as you heard, and not what we would normally expect to hear from Jesus. Jesus is speaking about the reality of family division and conflict. His message and mission will bring division, he says. I need to qualify, though, that it's not his desire to divide. It's a reality he's naming that's possible or even likely for some that he was speaking to at that time. Even the beautiful words of Mary's song, the Magnificat prior to the birth of Jesus, foreshadows some of the tension that would come from Jesus' ministry. And Simeon's prophecy at the time of Jesus was presented in the temple Uh, when he was presented in the temple as a child, also envisioned fallout as a result of his life and ministry. We know that even Jesus' own family experienced some of uh, this division. So all of this informs his comments. Envisioning a better world and working for something better rarely comes with unanimous agreement. Jesus has more to say about conflicts in other passages, including the importance of forgiveness and loving our neighbors, even our enemies, let alone family. So it's important to understand that Jesus is in no way encouraging division in his words, but he's also shining a light on the reality of it for some of those who would follow him in that day and perhaps even today. So tension in relationships is just one situation in which people of faith are called to persevere. The passage we heard earlier from the book of Hebrews is one of the most famous passages of scripture. Uh, The author is telling the story of people of faith and all the triumphs, but also the trials. The author tells us that believers were tortured, some were jeered at, whipped, chained in prison, some died by stoning, some died gruesomely, others were killed with the sword, some were destitute, oppressed, and mistreated. They wandered through deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something better in mind. As you hear the author of Hebrews share these experiences of people of faith, I want to pause right there and ask you a question. Because those images might be disconcerting. How do you normally imagine a life of faith? What would you hope for or expect if you live a life of faith? It may not be what the author of Hebrews is describing in this section of people's lives not going so well, 
Uh, Your understanding of faith may be more in line with something like Psalm 1. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper." In other words, if you live a good life, good things will come for you. You will prosper. Being a person of faith will lead to a happy life, and in many ways, there is truth in that. But that's one of the reasons why we also sometimes question God or our faith when bad things do happen to us. We think, I've lived a good life, or mostly a good life, Why is this happening to me? And our faith tradition has a variety of responses to that age-old question of why bad things happen. First, yes, sometimes our own poor decisions do impact our well-being and happiness, but that's not always the case. Um, Second, sometimes we're negatively impacted by the bad decisions or even malevolent actions of others. In short, sin and evil is a reality in our world, unfortunately, but that's not always what's going on. A third explanation, which is more on point with the words of Hebrews and our gospel reading today, is that there is something called vocational suffering. In the course of doing what's good and right, we bump up against resistance, opposition, or just plain old hard work that brings exhaustion and weariness, pain, and even persecution at times. And so... It's not that we're doing anything wrong or even that anyone else is particularly to blame. It's just the reality of making progress of our mission. Um, It's in fact predictable and part of our calling or vocation that we can expect some degree of hardship. It comes with the territory. We do receive peace and happiness through faith, but if we claim faith and take it upon ourselves to help and serve others, it can also bring trials. Finally, if you read scripture and the reflections from people of faith across the centuries, we also just leave room for mystery. We don't always know why life is so hard for some or why there's suffering. And in some cases, to force an answer or pretend we know isn't really faithful. We're just called to move forward by faith and trust in God's love for us, regardless of our circumstances. And that's what the author of Hebrews is talking about in this passage. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised. They were all models of faith, but they didn't have an idyllic life. I don't know about you, but for me, that's actually kind of helpful to hear. When life is tough, it reminds us that we're not alone. If people of incredible faith throughout history have faced challenges and trials, and even death, and they've kept the faith, maybe I can too. Sometimes God actually calls us into difficult places, even dangerous places, for the sake of mission. Sometimes winning and success, at least by human standards, isn't the point, but faithfulness is. Making the effort to share God's love and to extend life through Christ is the point, regardless of whether people embrace that or not. Living with hope and seeking to make the world a better place doesn't come cheap. The author of Hebrews wanted Christians to know that being a Christian doesn't guarantee that even our most faithful hopes will be realized. So that's the first thing to know. But he doesn't allow that to be the final word because the author also gives a long list of some of those triumphs and hopes fulfilled for some of these giants of the faith. And we certainly need that encouragement too. We need to see the blessings in our lives and give thanks Hebrews names a whole host of people who had faith and hope in something better, and they did, in fact, receive it. People like Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and Moses. And today, he says, by faith, the people of Israel crossed through the Red Sea that was parted. By faith, they marched around the city wall of Jericho, and the wall came crumbling down so they could finally enter into the promised land. The author names more, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, and on. 
By faith, these people all faced challenges, but they received what God had promised. Through the good and bad, they lived by faith. And we have the final words from today's passage, which have an almost poetic quality to them. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus persevered. We're called to do the same. But know that even at that, even if you give up or fail or lose faith for a time or lose hope, that even is part of the story of faith. It's part of losing our way and finding our way again, of discovering that God's grace is made most powerful in our own weakness and inability to see the job through. Even the disciples failed Jesus at many points, including in his final hours. None of this separates us from God if we remain open to his love and grace, since this is exactly why Jesus came, to bring light into darkness, to bring hope where there is despair, joy where there is sadness. That's a story and a message worth sharing. That's a mission and a life worth living. It doesn't come easy or without its own challenges, but through it all, by faith, God goes with us and stays by our side. Amen. That's this week's message. You don't have to navigate the road ahead alone. You can join with others at All Saints. Visit allsaintsmtka.org for more information. Have a great week. Thank you.